Hello there. So the other day I was working on a Node app and I wanted to implement a very simple authentication system using password and email and using sessions on the database. So I was like, what are the options available for authentication in Node? And the first option that most people said is next auth, which doesn't apply to my use case because it's specific to Next.js. And apparently next auth branched out to a more generic approach. It's called auth.js. Now here's the thing. I've heard many horror stories of people saying that if you want a password based authentication, that auth.js is not good. And they say it's very hard to customize. And I wanted just a very simple, the bare minimum needed to get a password and email authentication working. Okay. So because of that horror stories, I give up on auth.js. And then I've heard many people saying good things about Lucia. They said, well, it's extremely flexible. It's more low level. So you can install it, the library. And then you can add your own custom code on top uh, without having a hard time. So I said to myself, perfect. This is exactly what I want. But once I got to the homepage of Lucia Auth, I see this. Apparently, Lucia Auth is getting deprecated. And you know why? The creator behind it, he's called Pilcro on GitHub. He said that the project basically just grew too fast and many, many people started, started asking for new adapters and new uh, adapters for new databases and runtimes and the library started getting bloated. And he said that on his own personal projects, he just do it from scratch by hand. And he's actually going to focus now on writing guides on how to do authentication by hand instead of depending on a library. And I thought to myself, wow, this is actually what I want. I want just a code generator, like just show me the code that is necessary to get authentication running. And then I can customize it however I want. So I like this approach very much that Pilcro is taking with Lucia Auth. But then I thought, okay, that's pretty much what I have in Phoenix. So why am I doing this in Node? So I give up on creating this project in Node and I started using Phoenix because that's exactly what is going on on the authentication generator from Phoenix. It's just a code generator. It's not a package. It's not a library. You have complete access to the code. There's nothing hidden away from you and you can change it. So as an example, there was another project that I worked on a couple of months ago where I wanted magic links authentication. And what I did was I generated the basic auth from Phoenix and then I converted that auth to magic links only. So I just removed a bunch of stuff that was generated and I customized the code and that's exactly what I want. So if you go to the homepage of Phoenix, you can see here that it includes authentication and you can generate the authentication by simply running mix gen auth. And I, one blog post that I think it's very useful uh, to mention on this video is this one from Jose Balin. On this blog post from Dashbit, he explains a little bit of why he decided to go with a simple code generator for uh, the Phoenix auth instead of a full-blown package like device. So if you don't know, Jose Valin worked for another company called Plataforma Tech, and that company was responsible for device. So he have lots of experience creating authentication systems. And one thing that he realized with his experience that in the beginning, he tried to hide the complexity away from the developers. So this is what the user's table used to look like on the initial versions of device. You have a create table users, and then you add three lines of code and that's it. You just say, 
uh, table dot recoverable, rememberable, trackable. So this is very easy. Three lines of code. I can do it in two seconds, but I have no idea what is the shape of my database. What are the tables? What are the fields inside the users table? I have no idea. What if I want to customize it? Well, you kind of can't. And if you go to see the model here, it's the same thing. It's hidden away from you. You can see here database, authenticatable, recoverable, rememberable. And using Elixir now as an example, he wanted to avoid this. He wanted to avoid having like authentication fields, a custom function on the user's schema. And then you have no idea what's going on here. And if you want to customize, you can't. So instead, he created a code generator which you own and you can change it completely if you want. So yeah, here he mentions that he created by hand the generator. He talked to a bunch of folks that are focused on security. And then let me see what else. By default, it's a session based login slash logout. There's even account confirmation, password reset, remember me cookies. You can safely update your email. It includes two database tables, one for the users and another one for the tokens from the users. And yeah. Oh, and another cool thing is that the authentication is 100% code uh, test coverage. So you can sleep well knowing that experts wrote this code generator. He spoke with a bunch of security folks to audit the code base and he wrote tests for it. So let's see how the authentication system works in action. So before recording this video, I ran the following command in the terminal. I created a new Phoenix application called demo using SQLite 3 as the database. And now that the code was generated, I can go inside the demo. I can create my database. And then I can open that up on VS Code and run the server. So let me say code demo. Whoops. Oh no, I'm already on the demo folder. So code here. All right. So I'm just going to initialize Git so we have a better understanding of what is generated from the auth system. I'm going to say git init git add git commit let there be light. I need my password. Is it correct? Okay. All right. So if I run IEX dash S mix. Oh no, actually I just want to run the server. So I'm going to say mix PHX dot server. Okay. All right. If I go to localhost 4000, there you go. That's the default generator. Now let's run the auth from Phoenix. I'm going to go up to the guides. And then you can scroll down. There is authentication on the left sidebar. And here's what you have to do. You need to run this command right here. And I'm going to explain what exactly it's doing. So you're going to type mix phx.gen.auth followed by the name of your context. The context is like a way of interacting with your backend, your business logic. And I don't like this naming, so I'm just going to say users followed by the name of your schema. This is like your model on Ruby on Rails. I'm going to say that it's user in singular, and that is followed by uh, the name of your database table. So I'm going to say users in plural. Let's see what happens. Oh, and by default, the auth system from Phoenix uses live view. So you have a better user experience on the front end. I'm going to say yes. And here's what you do next. You're going to install dependencies with depths.get. And you might be thinking, whoa, hold up. You said there are no dependencies here. So what's going on? Let me show you. You're going to install the dependencies. 
one sec and then you're gonna run the migration with mix ecto dot migrate okay so let's open up mix dot exs to see what is the new dependency let's scroll down there you go we have bcrypt elixir and that's it there's nothing else here the only dependency that we installed is a dependency to encrypt and decrypt the password from the user all right now let's see a little bit of the code here's the best part you might be thinking okay if it generates the code for me it better be documented because if there are no documentation here i will get lost check this out open up any folder let me go to demo users as I mentioned, there are two schemas here. We have the users schema and then the users uh, tokens schema. And this is completely transparent for you. You know exactly what fields are inside the database. There's a token context send to, and then on the users, there you go. We have hashed password, current password, which is virtual actually. So this is not on the database. And then we have confirmed it. So it is completely transparent to you. And watch this. If I go, let me see. Yeah, as you can see, there are huge comments on top of every single function here. So we have build session token. This is the documentation for it. We have verify session token. There's documentation for it. You can open up literally any file. Let me see, let me see another one. We have a register user. Okay, the documentation is actually very small here. Okay, we have apply user email, for example, which says emulates that the email will change without actually changing on the database. So the documentation is amazing. You can learn a lot from here, especially on the backend side of your application and especially on the user token. There is so much good documentation here that like for, for real, I would pay for a resource like this. It feels like Jose Valin is teaching me authentication directly. So it feels really good. And if I start the server, just so you can have like an idea of how is the authentication system, is the server going to start? Okay. Now if I refresh, okay, now I'm going to zoom in because it's hard to see, but on the top right corner, there is register login. So I'm going to register. I'm going to say, okay, this is my email. I'm going to say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, Okay. Create an account. Creating account. All right. Account created successfully. And here's the thing. Let me see. Okay. I'm already logged in. So there is a settings page here that I can change the email, change the password. Okay. I can log out. And there's also password confirmation. And on Phoenix, there are a dev route that you can access locally. So you can manually confirm your email. Let me just make sure which is the route. So router I have, where is it? It's slash dev slash mailbox. So if I go here, slash dev slash mailbox. Okay, confirmation instructions. Hey, backhost.daniel, you can confirm your account by visiting the link below. So I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to paste confirm account. Yes. User confirmed successfully. And I have total control over the code base. If I want to convert this to, I don't know, if I want to remove the keep me logged in or the for forgot password, whatever customization I want to add on top, it's up to me. I can customize it however I want. And the best part, in my opinion, 
is that I don't depend on a random package that can be deprecated in the coming months. The only package that I'm using is to encrypt the password. And that's it. I think this is the best approach to authentication. I have complete control and it feels like I'm learning directly from Jose Valin by reading that comments. So if you are playing around with Phoenix, I highly recommend you to generate the auth and just read the documentation. You're going to learn a lot, I promise. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. See you next time.